We believe that the King James Bible, it contains the pure words of God. Every word is perfect. Amen. Because if we do not believe in a book that has perf per the perfect words of God, then we're going to find mistakes in it. If we believe that they, there are mistakes in it, then how do we know that what it's teaching or telling us is the truth? It could be wrong if it had a mistake. So one of the common criticisms against the King James Bible, this has been infamously used, proving that you do not have the pure words of God. Critics will say, well, the King James Bible, you think that every word is perfect. Well, didn't you know that it's been changed so many times? There are like literally hundreds and thousands of changes. And when you hear that, you get scared. You go, what? Really? <laughs> You know those hundreds and thousands of changes they were saying? It's not what you think. So here goes Jimmy White, and then he says, you know, there were thousands and hundreds of changes. And they just scream on top of their lung, changes, changes, changes. There were just thousands of them. And then you get all scared, and you get panic, and you go, oh my goodness, then my King James Bible is not perfect. You know what those quote-unquote thousands and hundreds of changes were? So, do you know the difference with a revision and an addition? A revision is when the ideas are changed. So, dramatic ideas are changed, so you have to revise it. You have to put new ideas, you have to change the idea. An addition is very, very different. It's not changing the ideas. Because the KJV, the reason why it went through several additions, not revisions, but additions. That's why it's called King, King James Version Editions. So pay attention to that. When the critics say it went through so many additions, oh, they're trying to make you think this. See that? Right. They're trying to make you think this, being very dishonest, trying to make you think this. Very misleading. Amen. The additions were simply typographical errors and standard and also spelling changes. So there were spelling changes and typographical errors. Like Sister Glory, she mentioned one time she had the original KJV 1611. Did she understand a single word out of that? No, you know why? Because there were so many spelling changes. That's right. That's your thousands of changes, is spelling changes. You know why? Because we're talking about 1611 English. Amen. During that time period, this way that they spelled the words were very different. So here were your thousands of changes that you should freak out about and throw away your Bible and say, it has mistakes in it. No, it's not the ideas that change like they're trying to make you think. It's just simply spelling changes and typographical errors. Because why? you got to realize this. They did not have printing machines back then. Let me add this too. Didn't you know that even right now, when you have your King James Bibles printed out, there are still some printing errors? Mm -hmm. So just because of printing errors, is that something that you freak out about and throw away the Bible? I mean, for crying out loud. See, they're trying to make you think that it's very serious. That's right. So even with advanced technology that we have, uh, through the printing, we still even have printing errors in the King James Bible. Because, like one of them, I had several of them, but one of them that I had, it had, <laughs> it's spelled like this. It mentioned he, but it made a printing error that it added another H. Oh, it's an error! It's an error! It's an error! Ah! Throw away the King James got mistakes! No, that's insanity. Yeah. Only insane people will talk like that. So just become James White, and you will talk like that. Okay? Go. So you see how ridiculous it is? So typographical errors that time, they had to do it manually by block. So when you put the letters in there by hand, and then you do thousands of pages, do you honestly think you're not going to slip up once? Of course you are. Sometimes even a whole stack of row was messed up because they were putting blocks for one stack of row and it got messed up. So I'm going to show you the typographical errors. These are probably the most serious ones. And you can tell from this that it was simply printing errors. It was not changing ideas. One for Ruth chapter 3 verse 15, it says he went into the city. But then the next time they wrote it, it says, and she went into the city. So just one S, see? Another one. 
they, uh, Matthew 26, 36, they had Judas for Jesus. For Exodus 20, verse 14, they omitted the word not. Revelation 21, verse 1, the Bible says no more see, but then they didn't add the word no, so they put there was more see. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. The unrighteous shall not inherit, right? But because they dropped the word not, it went the unrighteous shall inherit. For Psalms 119, verse 161, it's pretty funny. It says, the printers have persecuted. So they slipped up that one word. Isaiah 57, verse 12. Shall profit instead of shall not profit. John 5, 14 sin on more for sin no more so they switched the n and the no you see that another one uh luke chapter 20 parable of the vineyard no they slipped a parable of the vinegar <laughs> mark 7 37 sting of the tongue not string luke 22 34 they put the word philip instead of peter who denied jesus jude 1 16 murderers instead of murmurers. First Timothy, you see this? You can tell this is typographical errors. It was not deliberate changes where the, the, they were changing ideas. That, oh, the KJV it had a wrong idea here, so we have to fix that up. No, that wasn't the case. It was because they made typographical slip-ups. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 21, I discharge instead of I charge. 1 Kings 7, 19, out of thy lions instead of loins. So they switched the I and the O. Galatians 4, 20, you see this nitpickiness that they were doing? This nitpickiness that they're doing. You wouldn't find that unless you dedicated yourself to attack the KJV version. Right. So you critics out there have to seriously look at your heart. You wouldn't have found this? I know that people even right now wouldn't have found this in their daily Bible reading because we still have printing mistakes, but we wouldn't make a big deal out of it unless you have an agenda. Amen. Unless you have an agenda on this. Uh, Galatians 4.29 To remain ins inserted instead of a comma. Ezekiel 47.10 The fishes shall stand instead of fishers. Matthew 13.43 Ears to ear instead of to hear. Luke 14.26 Hate not and his own wife instead of life. Rebecca rose and her and her camels instead of damsels. <laughs> not cease to bring to birth instead of not to cause to bring forth. The fool has said in his heart, there is a God. Instead of the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And this is probably the longest. This is the longest typographical error. You ready? This is something to panic about, okay? Yea, further to, yet he shall not find it. Yea, farther. That's the most serious, longest one. Now, do you see this? You can tell this is just simply typographical errors. There is no doubt about this. Now, James White and the other critics of the KJV, they'll now bring up this. But you know, that's not enough because the KJV went through many different editions, right? But it still did not stop at the 1800s. So it went through six or seven. There are probably multiple more. But then it did not stop right there. Now you got what you call the Cambridge KJV versus the Oxford. So when you have Cambridge versus Oxford, this was like around 1900s. So now KJV believers and Bible critics are trying to say this is that the one that we had all this time, all the way till the 1900s, the Oxford, had mistakes in it. So we should use the Cambridge instead. So now we got a, a mistake in the KJV too. So here are the serious mistakes. But you can tell again that it's very nitpicky. That's only typographical errors. Or Sheba, not and Sheba. Joshua 19.2. Sin, not sins. In 2 Chronicles 33.19. Spirit of God, the Spirit is capitalized, not Spirit of God, which is lowercase, Job 33, 4. Whom ye, not whom he, so they just replaced the Y with the H in Jeremiah 34, 16. Spirit of God, uh, again, the capitalization, Ezekiel eleven twenty four. 24. Flieth, not fleeth, Nahum 3, 16. 
Spirit again, not capitalized, Matthew 4, 1. Further, not farther, in Matthew 26, 39. Bereath, not betrayeth, Matthew 26, 73. And then, Spirit again, in Mark 1, 12, Acts 11, 28, and 1 John 5, 8. Now, do you, you see this? This is not the serious, dramatic changes that they're trying to make you panic about. This is all, there's no doubt. See, it's typographical error spelling changes. And guess what? We still face that today. So if I'm reading from the KJV version, and then I'm preaching you a sermon and I preach out of that verse, and then one of you knuckleheads said, oh, guess what? The he added an H right here. We got a contradiction. We got a problem right here. I think you're going to be very, do you think people are going to, think that, oh yeah, this is a serious change. This is a serious problem right here. Let's panic right here and throw away the King James Bible. Come on, man. Only nitpicky, insane people who have an agenda that they really want to attack the KJV yeah, right. would talk something silly and stupid like that. That's right. See? So it's not as serious and bad that you think. All right? If you want to throw away the whole KJV just because of something, something like this, my goodness, go ahead then, all right? That's your Bible, not mine, all right?